All right, today we're doing up some beef ribs in the Pit Boss 3 Series smoker. I've had a lot of requests for this one, and it's taken forever to find beef ribs. For whatever reason, they don't sell them in the grocery stores around here. So I went online and I bought them from Grand Western Steaks. Let's check this out. Here we go, let's get this box open. So this is a roughly four and a half pound, three bone slab of beef ribs. They're also known as plate ribs and some other things, but uh, really, really nice quality here. I can't wait to cut this open. So let's do that and get a rub on it real quick. All right, let's cut this out of here. Wow, that is nice. So just like you saw me do on my brisket, I'm gonna take a thing of paper towels, get as much of this blood and purge off of here as I can. I kind of use this bag to protect my cutting board a little bit. Now this backside, it's got a ton of uh, fat on there, but that's fine. There's no meat on this backside and we can just let that protect the beef, you know? The heat's coming up from the bottom. This will be facing down. One thing I am gonna do right now is just kind of make a little bit of a cut through the fat and down through the uh, silver skin. And this will just help me cut these later. You don't have to do this, but I just figure I'll take this little extra step. I'm not gonna put any rub on the back side of these ribs. This is all fat, so why bother wasting the rub? All right, so for the rubs, I'm using three different kinds. Uh, first is this Pit Boss Competition Smoked. Really good stuff in here. It's gonna give a nice texture, hopefully help, the, help us build up a little bit of a bark. Then I'm gonna use this Heath Riles Garlic Jalapeno. You guys saw me use that last week on my St. Louis ribs. Really good stuff. And then I'm gonna finish it off with this Harry Sue beef moolah rub. This is his uh, beef rub, really good. I used it on my brisket a few weeks ago. So we'll finish it off with that. But before I can put down the rubs, we gotta trim off some of this fat. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so just like on my brisket, if I don't take this layer of fat off, the rub is not gonna get the meat. So we're gonna be careful because this is an expensive cut of ribs, uh, not to trim away any meat unnecessarily. So notice I'm just making small cuts to see how far I've gone and there we go. Look at that big chunk of fat. That rub's not gonna make it through there. So this goes to the side. We'll just keep trimming away. Take your time. If you're not good with a knife like me, there's no reason to rush it. See how I'm doing that? Just little, little cuts. You don't want to make a big, big cut, and a big mistake. It's coming off nice. So if you look here, I went a little too deep. Just gonna kind of go here. Leave that little flap there. There we go. That's looking good, good enough for me. Let's get these rubs on there. All right, just like last week, I'm gonna start with a layer of this garlic jalapeno. It's kind of like a SPG with jalapeno in there. So get a nice layer of this. This is a huge piece of meat and it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot of seasoning. So don't worry about 
overdoing it. You'll notice I'm getting the sides. Get this side. It's gonna help you build that bark all around it. Okay, next up is this uh, smoke-infused rub from Pit Boss. It's got a real nice, strong hickory flavor, garlic, some other stuff, onion. I go with this bigger opening. Just the humidity out here today is really giving these rubs a hard time. go that side holy moly it's all right just pat it in same thing over here all right and now for this Harry Sue's beef rub Gonna give us nice color, nice flavor. Get this on top of there. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Pat that in. Get these sides here. All right, so this is gonna go in the refrigerator for about 45 minutes. I want to show you guys my pellets, how I mix those. We'll get the pit boss fired up, then we'll bring them back out right out of the refrigerator into the smoker. All right, so for the pellets, I'm really getting into it, enjoying the science of, of mixing these things and learning about it. I tried these pecan pellets last week, just phenomenal, um, mild smoke flavor. I'm not quite sure how else to put it. So I'm going to be mixing pecan with some hickory. The hickory is a stronger smoke. That beef holds up well to the smoke. The hickory should also help with that darker bark color. So what I do is I've got a bucket that I use just for pellets. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of pecan. And an equal amount of hickory. So let's get that in there. Then you just mix it by hand. Make sure it's all combined. If you don't do this, what could happen is um, it could burn through all hickory first, depending on how you dump it in, and then the pecan after. I want to combine it so it kind of happens all at the same time. Now I can pour it into the back of the hopper. Let's fire it up. I'm cooking at 275 today. And basically what that means for this smoker is it's gonna smoke somewhere between 250 and 275. It might go up a little bit above 275 here and there, but it's gonna stay in that 250 to 275 range, no problem. And this is about a four and a half pound rack of beef ribs. So I'm just gonna estimate about an hour per pound for these to be done. And just like I did with my brisket, we're gonna wrap it when it gets a nice color that I like. That might be 160 degrees Fahrenheit, that might be 165, we're not sure. And then it'll be wrapped until it's probe tender, somewhere around 205 degrees. Could be more, could be less. Just one of those things, you gotta play it by ear. I can already smell that sweet aroma of the smoke coming out. We're gonna let this heat up and then I'll come back out and put the ribs in. All right, so here's how they look after about a half hour in the refrigerator. I did just put a new light dusting of uh, rub on there. Some of it kind of came off as I was handling it, but uh, we're ready to go. Let's get it in the smoker. First thing I gotta do is get some water in the pan. Seems like when you're smoking at uh, 275, 250, about every two hours, you gotta come out and fill that up. Okay, then our beef ribs are gonna go in. This is about the middle rack, a little bit higher than the middle. Close the door. 
and we are on our way. So we'll come back at the one hour mark, see how they look, and if we need to spritz them or do anything to them, we'll find out in an hour. We are at the one hour mark, so let's take a look, see how our beef ribs are looking. Oh yeah, let's pull this out a little bit. You can see the meat starting to pull away from the bones a little bit. So there's our three bones. Now as far as the rub goes, it's the old finger test. If it's not coming off, that's good. It means it's set. Over here though, it's coming off. Okay, real nice dark color on there. See a little bit of blood coming out of the top here, which is fine. And at this point, we don't need to spritz it at all. Plenty of moisture on there. Our water pan's still about half full. So we'll let this go another hour. We'll come back and see how it looks then. All right, we're on hour number two. Let's open this up and see how they look. Yeah, I'm really liking the color on these right now. So the rub is not coming off. That's just juice. I'm pretty happy with this, guys. I think it's time to wrap these. So I'm ready to wrap these. It was two hours in the smoker at 275. We got all kinds of nice smoke flavor on there, built up a little bit of a bark. I mean, just look at that. Just absolutely beautiful. You can see the nice pullback on the bones there. So now for the remainder of the cook, we're gonna try and make these as tender as we can. That's why we're gonna wrap them. If you don't have butcher paper here like I do, uh, you could use tin foil. It's, it's perfectly fine. The one nice thing about beef ribs is these giant bones are gonna keep this, the meat up, elevated. So any kind of juice that settles down to the bottom, it's not gonna really affect your bark as much as it would maybe a piece of brisket. So to wrap these, pretty simple. Just gonna fold over the two sides like so. Fold up this end. Let me spin it so you can see. That's it. Keep rolling it. And then be mindful of which side is the bottom. I made a mistake on my brisket video where I put the bark side upside down and that sat in the juices. The brisket tasted fine. It just really uh, washed away all my bark. So we don't want to have that happen this time. If I fold this over like that, now the meaty side is on the bottom. And this thing is gonna be flapping in the wind because I don't have a way to, to hold that. So right here, I can just get a pair of scissors and cut that paper. Or if you're not that concerned about it like me, I'm just gonna go ahead, fold that under. There we go. So this is going back in the smoker until it's probe tender. We want to get it up around 205 degrees or so, but the temperature's not as important as the tenderness. So we'll come back when it's probe tender, show you how they look and give them a taste. All right, it's been two hours. So we did two hours unwrapped, two hours wrapped. Remember this was about four and a half pounds before I trimmed the fat. And I'm just using an hour per pound as a guideline. So I think they'll probably be close to done but I won't know until I unwrap this and give it the probe test. So let's do that real quick. I'm sure you can see the juice is really just pouring out of this thing. It's still very hot, of course, so. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at this, this is crazy. Okay, I mean the bones, the meat's not even connected to the bones anymore. So that's one sign that it's done. Just stick a probe in here. Oh yeah, look at that. Zero resistance when I pull that out. Ah, oh, that's done. So that's it, I'm gonna wrap this back up. Gonna put it in this tray like this. And then I'm gonna put it in my cooler to rest for about an hour. And we'll be back. All right, here we go. 
That took forever, it seemed like. Two hours unwrapped, two hours wrapped, and then an hour to cool. I've got it out here on the cutting board and I wanna cut into it before the flies get to it. So let's try it out. So as you can see, the bones pretty much completely came out of this thing. But I'm gonna cut it as if it were still on a bone. So we'll do a cut right here. We'll do the other cut right there. And I can tell you guys, this smells so beefy and delicious. Okay, can you see that? Can you see all the juice coming out of that guy? Oh my God. So I'm not gonna put this whole thing in my mouth here. What I'll do instead, so let me just cut myself a little slice. Oh, you wanna talk about a bend test? Look at the juice. You can see the marbling in there. Let me get a bite. Let me try that. Oh my God. The beef flavor is so intense. That's why I love beef ribs. That rub only complements it. I mean, that is fantastic. Let me get another bite of this. Mm. So good. I'll tell you what, if you like what we're doing here, you're gonna love one of these two videos right there on the Pit Boss. Check it out and I'll see you over there. Hey, come on over, you gotta try this. This is awesome.